All right, next thing is gonna be the uh, defrost terminator slash fan delay switch. And I have one right here. Basically, it's a three wire switch. It's got that black, red, and brown wire. Uh, if you look here on the numbers, it's got a C, 35 degrees, and an O, 55 degrees. So what this is representing is that um, it closes at 35 degrees and opens at 55 degrees. If, if you remember here, we have basically two switches in one. So on temperature rise, this side will close. On temperature fall, this side will close. So what it's saying here, based on these specs, is that at 55 degrees here, this side will close, and at 35 degrees on this end, this side will close. So during defrost, when the temperature hits 55 degrees, it's gonna close this switch. That's gonna energize your solenoid on back of your defrost timer and kick it out of defrost, put it back in the refrigeration. Doesn't matter if there's any time left on the uh, duration time of your defrost clock, doesn't matter. If you're using this switch in conjunction with a uh, termination switch on your timer, that's what's gonna happen, okay? Once your refrigeration system begins to run, your evaporator's gonna get cold again. Your fans are not gonna come on. The reason why your fans are not gonna come on is because this switch is still open. This wire runs in series with your fan motors. Once the temperature of that coil or this switch hits 35 degrees, then this completes the circuit, then your fans come on. Uh, really, there's two reasons for that delaying, delaying of your fans. Number one is, if you just came out of defrost, you have a bunch of water that's draining or dripping into your drain pan, and hopefully, by the, by the time these fans come on, all that water has kind of gone down the drain. Uh, if the fans were to come on right away, all that water and residual uh, moisture is going to be sprayed into your box. A good sign of, of seeing this happen is basically when you walk into a freezer box and you see a bunch of water droplets on the ceiling. You might want to check your fan delay at that point. <clears throat> uh, the other reason is, of course, you just came out of defrost, so you got a bunch of heat on your coil. So if that fan comes on right away, first thing that's going to blow out of that coil is going to be all that heat. And of course, the whole purpose of refrigeration is to remove heat. And so the less amount of heat you have, in the box to get rid of, the better refrigeration system will work. Okay, so that's your defrost terminate fa slash fan delay. Okay, that's that switch. So again, it's this one. Okay, next one is going to be your heater, li heater safety limit switch. Um, this switch, it says here, uh, C is 40 and O is 75. So it closes at 40, opens at 75. So basically at 75 degrees, if the heaters are energized and let's say they get stuck running or let's just say they run for an excess amount of time, when this switch hits 75 degrees, it's going to open. This, These wires are in series with the heater power. So once this breaks open, your heaters are no longer energized and at that point, that's a good thing, especially if it's getting above this 75 degree mark, okay? This switch will reset or reclose at 40. So as long as this thing's at 40 degrees, this switch should be closed. So if it's at 40 degrees and you know it's at 40 degrees, or heck, let's just say the box temperature is zero degrees, that means this switch should already be closed. You could take an ohm reader or your, your continuity BP test and see if it's closed. If it's not closed, it's probably a bad switch. If you turn heat defrost on and the heaters don't come on, and you're drawing zero amps, most likely the switch is open or stuck open. Okay, so two pretty basic switches. All right, let's get this out of the way here. All right, next we're gonna be looking at our um, expansion valves. And so basically, here's a sample expansion valve that we have in our box, so if you take this one here, it's got a removable power element. These power elements can be swapped out. So you can take this one off and pop a new one on, okay? And the reason you would wanna do that is if you're changing refrigerant types, okay? Remember the valve body itself is going to regulate the amount of refrigerant into your evaporator, and this size is based on your BTUs of your unit. And so these are rated in tonnage. So if you got 12,000 BTUs, evaporator, that's a one ton system, you would need a one ton valve. Now, most likely you won't be able to get an exact match on your valve, but you can get a range, let's just say uh, 6,000 to 12,000, which would be half ton to one ton uh, valve rating. That's what you would use on a 12,000 
uh, BTU evaporator. Okay, so let's just say you had a 404 system and you want you can change the compressor out or the condenser to 404. You want to be sure to change out your power element. Let's that was rated for 22 to a 404 power element. Okay, so make sure you do that. Of course, this power element here, like it has that. It has the uh, the bulb that's kind of reading temperature on your suction line. Um, as the temperature fluctuates, it's going to op it's going to move this uh, this disc in here up and down, which is going to put pressure on these rods, and that's going to either push or give away to um, your your plate in here, your disc in here, to allow more refrigerant or less refrigerant into your evaporator. And that's, that's in conjunction with a spring pressure here. And of course your spring pressure can be adjusted by your, your valve wrench um, stem. So right here is your, uh, your superheat valve stem. That's going to change the, the pressure on a spring in here. If you go counterclockwise, which basically is opening the valve or letting more refrigerant through it, uh, the more refrigerant you put into that evaporator, the less superheat you'll have. Okay? The less superheat you'll have. Because you're going to be flooding that evaporator with more refrigerant. And so by the time it's all filled up, by the time it changes over to a gas, it's going to be very little, so your superheat should be very minimal. Uh, if you close the valve off, you're going to decrease the amount of refrigerant that's feeding into your evaporator. Uh, and that means the refrigerant should boil off to a gas pretty quick and that's going to create a higher superheat. Most low temp evaporators you kind of want to superheat somewhere in the single digits. Uh, I would say roughly between 5 and 8 degrees is pretty good. Okay. And if you're working on a cooler, um, your superheat there might be let's say between 10 and 15 roughly. Okay. So uh, last thing in here is uh, your body Right here has got a little mark that says one half, so this represents a half ton. And then right here, if you can see, there's a little word and it says in. That's your inlet, so make sure you solder it in the right direction. Okay, we're going to go out to the uh, warehouse again, look at that liquid line cylinder valve, and we'll check out a few more things.